So obviously, you know, we're talking about Scare Package 2. At what point during uh, during the production process of Scare Package did you realize that you wanted to come back and do another one? Well, I mean, I think when we were making it, we were like, oh, that would be amazing. If we could. You always have these like grandiose ideas of like, here's our horror franchise, but you're never actually going to happen. You're never actually going to do that. So we didn't really take it that seriously until that, that first week on Shudder. And then Shudder's like, oh, by the way, this is blowing up. And uh, it was one of the top releases when it first came out um, in Shudder's history. And then since then, other movies you know, have broken that record. But we had it for like a week you know, um, and uh, it was really special. And, and I was like, oh my goodness. So these stupid jokes that I laugh at, other people are laughing at, and that feels really special. And I guess, I guess we have to now. So, and, and yeah, then, then we immediately started like, well, we killed all our favorite characters. Now, what the hell do we do? <laughs> and how do we, how do we make this work? And, uh, but that became a, a fun, a fun challenge in the process. And the first one is a super, super fun anthology, but I think this one sort of tops that. How, when you are sort of going around writing a, a second film, how do you, you up the ante? Well, I think the good thing was we had established a world and some rules that kind of like made sense. So we knew the sensibility and the style that this needed to kind of like work within. But, you know, you're, one of the things that, that we would do constantly was what is the easy answer and then throw that out. You know, so again, in I, I always thought the easy version of this was to go back and just put videotapes in at Rad Chats for Emporium. And that still would have been a fun movie. Mm. Like I think people, but I think that's what people expect, you know, coming into Scare Package 2. And that's why I was like, well, then we can't do that. You know, we got to pull the rug out from under them. We got to find a way to to make this like crazier. And and so that that really starts with what is the most wild idea of this? And then it's like, is that achieve like is that literally even possible given our budget and and if we think there's like maybe then we have to do it if it's like okay that's just literally no, no way okay fine but I start with like just ambition you know and then and then you're like so and especially in particular if Cameron Burns is like I don't see any way we can do this then I'm like okay that means we kind of have to do it you know and I love to kind of fight against that He's like how are we going to put bees inside of people like what does that even mean you know, and I'm like, I don't know, but this line, you know, you called horror, a, you know, you called horror a B movie. Well, the real horror is the 10,000 Bs that I put inside of you. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But that line makes me laugh. I don't know what that means. And we're going to write something around that line. <laughs> like, and that's it. You know, we're going to make it happen. And that's, that kind of became, we would set these like standards. Like, I don't know. We got to figure it out though. And that's what's fun about it though, at the same time. Yeah. And your story in particular, pays a lot of, uh, of homage and, and parody to uh, the Saw franchise. What was it about that series that stood out to you as one that was sort of ripe for, for, for mining? It is the, so it, of all the horror franchises, I mean, and Friday the 13th goes a little crazy too later on, but there are none that retcon and go back and change their history in a way that Saw does where you have a flashback of a scene and there's two people sitting there. And then the next flashback, it's wider and there's four people sitting there. And then there's someone else there. And it's like, what? And then Carrie Elway shows up. And then like, it just doesn't, it, I could not wrap my head around it. I mean, I'm, I had to go back and watch scenes from other ones. I mean, this was you know during the pandemic while, when Spiral was coming out. So I'm like frantically trying to like understand the canon. And I'm, you know, I, I scored well in high school. I had okay grades. I feel like I should be able to figure some of this out, but I could not figure out the Saw franchise. So the there's a moment in the end of Square Package 2 where he's like, do you know what's going on? And that is just me, you know, sitting there like, what the hell is happening right now? And and so that that just became like a fun thing when you're talking about horror tropes. And, and especially in a sequel, you know, the sequel horror trope and what that really meant was really, really fun to kind of comment on. But then also you have this like character, Jigsaw, who has this like indignation, who feels like they know how the world should be. And I'm growing frustrated seeing people talk about B movies and elevated horror and all this. And I was like, well, what if these like, horror, this is this heightened world where these horror people took their horror fandom and fandom was really frustrating me too on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's like, you're ruining my childhood and all these things that make no sense. 
I was like, well, what if that becomes a really fun villain? You know, so I could turn Jigsaw into a horror fandom villain. That became really fun. Now I get to write this Jigsaw stupid dialogue and that's great, you know? And then the real sealer was now I get to make, you know, scare package style saw traps, the dumbest saw traps imaginable. I was like, well, that's, that's fun. And I was like, so this becomes, you know, this is the franchise that needs to be our linchpin and then we'll kind of branch off from there. It, it, but I, I, it just felt, it just felt so right. Yeah. And the series is, uh, the, the Scare Packy series it is sort of known for its like ooey, gooey, uh, gore and practical effects. How much, uh, how much fun is it to be on set and sort of go from what you've written on the, on the page to suddenly seeing it brought to life? I mean, it's it's the best thing. I mean, we, like early on, we did one of the first big gags we did was all the acid vomiting of people. And it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? And how are we going to make it work? And when you get a crew together and it's 100 degrees and <clears throat> everybody's working so hard, and, you know, and you're sweating and we're in this warehouse in Oklahoma City in the summer and it's just awful. And, you know, and people are getting tired. But then they see my friend Generator you know, getting vomited on acid vomit from Kelly Maroney, you know, and Kelly just has this, like, she's just going so hard at it. And, and everybody's just clapping and laughing and like, oh my God, this is so fun. It just invigorates everyone, you know, and the whole crew gets behind it. And they're like, wow, this is, this is not like the normal movies that I'm working on, you know, and they get something that's, you get like immediate gratification, uh, which, which you, is really hard to do when you're on a film set. And, uh, and it brings camaraderie, you know, it brings everybody together. And, and when those gags, when you pull it off and you've got, there's so many moving pieces to make those gags work the right way. So, you know, and when you, when you, when you hit it, it's just becomes this like invigorating moment for everyone. So yeah, it's, uh, that's part of what I love, you know, which is the, that weird kind of combination of, you know, uh, just like all these pieces and like, how do you angle this the right way? And then it looks and you're like, oh my God, that just works. Like, and it's magic, you know, it's a magic trick and uh, it's the best feeling. Like, I mean, I chase it all the time in every movie we do. I'm always trying to get bigger gags. Like even when I'm producing for other people, I'm like, we could really make this kind of, even Blood Relatives, there's a moment where I want her to lift and hit the, like when she punches her, I want her to lift and hit. I'm like, let's go bigger with this and you know what it can be. Cause I love these gags so those are those are usually a lot of my impact onto onto projects when we get onto set yeah yeah I mean you've had you know your production company's had a very very busy year this year and you know like we just you know mentioned their blood relatives that recently also also dropped on on Shudder I know that you and Noah have been friends for a number of years but how did you how did you get involved with with that and what I mean you know when did you realize that you know what he was working on was something quite special yeah, you know, I mean, we first met on Starry Eyes. That was the first time we had met. And, uh, you know, and then he's been in all my movies prior. And yeah, you know, we, part of the scare package idea here is to find these super talented filmmakers that I love and I want to work with. I love producing for other people, but giving some people opportunities that haven't, you know, directed features and whatnot. And for the most part, and bringing them in and saying, hey, let's make something together. And then if that goes well, we can make more together from there. And Noah really wanted to step into directing and he had been talking about it for a while. had been a really, really talented writer and that was the next step for him. And Scare Package just made a lot of sense. So we did that. And then we're like, okay, now we've kind of got this worked out. You know, you've worked out some kinks of what you want to do in your vision. Uh, let's go. He had a couple scripts, but the one that I thought was most achievable was Blood Relatives. And, uh, you know, we talked about that. I mean, we were, we were talking about Blood Relatives while we were making the first Scare Package. So it was something that we knew that was there. And it was, and again, it was a script that with Paper Street Pictures, like we take a lot of pride in like horror with heart, you know, like that's a motto of ours and we want there to be something. And I just thought Blood Relatives like perfectly encapsulated what that was. And then the upcoming, sorry about the demon does the same thing. Um, the pale door, you know, I thought had a little bit of that. So that that's something that's important to me. And then Scare Package for as absurd as it is, like there is a lot of heart in Scare Package, you know, and it is, about horror fandom and the things that we love, but then so much is about sharing it with other people, you know? And I have this grand idea that a horror, you know, this horror aficionado is sitting there, it's a diehard horror watching this with their partner and their partner's maybe not a big horror fan, but they're both laughing. And then, and then their partner's like, why are you laughing so much at the scene? It's like, this is a reference to this. 
And they're like, wait, what? And he's like, oh, you've got to watch Hellbound. Now, next thing you know, now that couple is watching Hellbound. And I just did, I just recreated my childhood, you know, high school experience of being in the video store and recommending movies to people. And now, we're, now because of Scare Package and Scare Package 2, they're watching other horror films. And like that to me is kind of the epiphany, you know, of what this could be and, and what we were trying to do. Yeah, and I think that the release with with Shudder's times, you know, quite nicely for the for the holiday season, which I guess means that it won't necessarily be people and their partners. It'll be people and you know the whole family. It'll be you know the yeah. you know, maybe the the younger generation will get to pick a film one night, and they're all going to potentially sit down and and watch Scare Package too. You know, that must be quite a, a, an entertaining idea given the uh, <laughs> the demographics of an average family and uh, the areas that this film goes to. Yeah, yeah, that's that is a fun thing to think about. I mean, I know. I don't think my mom's watching it, but but I will say I think uh, the idea that somebody with a family around Christmas is watching Scare Package and and you know and and hopefully again someone there is telling them like oh that's a reference to this that's a reference to this and they can feel that admiration because one of the things we had it was important to me was that the references needed to be narrative based you know so it wasn't like a like an episode of family guy where you stop and you do a thing and then you come back to a story i think one time i stopped and that was kind of the the drive kiss sequence that's the one time that i was like okay i love this so much i still have to kind of do it and it is a little bit narrative based but the rest was those references had to be driving the story forward and propulsity in that and uh so yeah hopefully people catch up on that and that will be a fun thing to see you know, I just, I just can't wait to see what people think, you know, and how it's going to land. Yeah, and uh, my, my final question would be, you know, it's, it's sort of teased as any good uh, horror film in a, in a franchise does, it's teased that there might be more more to come. Are you hoping that you might get a chance to uh, do Scare Package 3? Have you started thinking of new and inventive ways to uh, to kill your, your friends? Yeah, yeah. When we, I mean, first off, I'm always looking for new and inventive ways to kill my friends. That is definitely, uh, it's an important part of the filmmaking process. Uh, but Yes, you know, when we realize that, oh my God, people actually like this weird thing, then I immediately had an idea for a two and three. Um, so so yes, I have my quote unquote Bradshad trilogy uh, in mind. And, uh, you know, if people like this, it uh, would be the greatest honor to bring it back one more time. Yeah. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. No, me too, me too. Uh, Kat, thank you so much. Like, I just really appreciate taking the time and chatting with us and love the T2 and that. These are great. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Thank you. You know, thank you for the films. Uh, you know, keep them, keep them coming. I know you guys have got a lot next year. So, uh, keep yeah, them. another busy year. Yeah. And thank you for everything you do and all the support of all our projects. It means a lot. It really, really does.